I want to share with you the story that basically uh, led me to design this event. It's uh, a story of failure and hope. And the failure was mine, of course, and I hope the hope is for everyone. And basically, it was three years ago, and I, would, I just came back from Stanford, and I was full of energy and ready to start my class. And uh, at Stanford, I had learned design thinking, as you might uh, have uh, known, and some rudiments of project-based learning. And uh, I actually realized that uh, my place, the place where I came from, Reggio Emilia Engineering, was really, really a special place. Because here, you have a lot of competencies at hand. It's like uh, Uli was mentioning before, like normal university are structured in a way they're accessing other competencies is not easy. You need to go like one level up and one level up and then probably like uh, talk to the big guy together, you know, to arrange, you know, this kind of uh, collaboration and then maybe something happened. If you come here, just walk on the corridor and knock to other people's door. And I decided that even if it was a big commitment, since uh, I had designed the content of my class with Elisa uh, just the year before, I decided to basically completely redesign my class in order to be more aligned with my new sensibility. So we introduce the design thinking, we collaborate with non-profit organization companies in order to uh, have real-world challenge, and we have the student collaborating with them, and man, that was the right thing to do. I was really, really happy to teach. I was able to be more aligned with my research identity because I was really doing something new also in my teaching, and uh, the students were interested and responsive, and the results were impressive. Impressive means that we went to the newspaper and everyone was really, really happy. And uh, they were so impressive that at the end of the projects, one organization asked the student to present their idea to the board. And the team was thrilling, and I was too, basically. A group of students in a short period of time was able to deeply understand a complex problem. Conceive a multitude of solutions and with the method to select and design a solution that an organization thought it was perfect for their needs. That was done by students inside, collaborating inside the organization. Bang. The presentation was perfect, and the organization was ready to invest the team to finance a startup. I was really happy. I thought, here we come. We are no, no longer looking for a job. We are creating ones. And I thought, yeah. Uh, that's happening here as well. And the organization starts talking with the team, and then something weird really happens. The team disintegrates, and the students start thinking that it's very hard. That's a big responsibility. That this might put their studies at risk. And if we fail? The organization, of course, retires. We need committed people for this. That was really a bad moment since I realized that I failed. I failed because in the hunting model, we caught the prey, but we weren't able to bring it back home. And I failed because I thought that teaching a good innovation method, the design thinking, was the solution. And mostly, probably, I failed because I thought that I could change the world alone. In Silicon Valley, they say, embrace failure. Because if you're not willing to take the risk of failing and not experience failure, you're never going to figure out what the right path is to success. Nice say. But really hard to come out from failure. Then a Stanford professor and a good friend, which is called David Kelly, gave a speech at TED. It's called How to Build Your Creative Confidence. If you have not seen this talk, it's about a transformation process that they do at the D school. And it's about talking people in who had the fear they weren't creative, and after a series of small steps, kind of a series of small successes, they turn fear into familiarity and they surprise themselves. 
here comes the hope and why you all are sitting here. If we want to make a change through education, our goal are not the students. It is the society through the students. This is because I believe that all students have strengths and innate abilities that are connected to an inexhaustible need for expression and realization that should be integrated with a new culture of courage and sensibility towards what's new. So I dream about a place where students are learning how to integrate their different competencies, innovating the world they live based on people's needs, and become confident they can shape the future with their hands, with the support of their network, environment, and country. I think that place is here. Someone around here some years ago wrote this sentence on the wall of a school. Men and women together, we built the wall of this school with our hands because we want it new and different for our children. I want this vision to thrive in order to build a new society driven by innovation and creativity through education and cooperation. Are you guys ready? have some final remor remarks. This is uh, the same vision that Bill Clinton shared on this speech granting Obama for president. And he says that on these four pillars, they want to build the new American dream. And uh, the second remark is that Corrado Passera, our current ministry of um, development, economical development, uh, use the same concept on the last number of WIRED. I really think that if as a society we tackle this problem, we have some chance to succeed.